100 to 1,000x gains. Okay, look, I know I clickbait in some videos. This is one of the few times where I'm not exaggerating the slightest. If you know how to invest in crypto games, you are going to make the largest returns out of anyone you know in crypto over the next two years. It is simply going to make the NFT boom that we've recently seen look tiny. It is going to deliver by far the best ROIs and the largest overblown, out of proportion overvaluations that we've ever seen. The metaverse and crypto gaming is going to be one of the largest industries in the entire world. Ownership of digital assets, digital items and games, in-game currency, and playing to earn is going to be one of the default ways, is going to be the default way that people experience the digital world and also play games. It is going to be bigger than all the gaming industry combined. It is going to blow away the movie industry. It is going to be absolutely gargantuan. I cannot stress it enough. There is only 60,000 active wallets on OpenSea, give or take, right now. There are over 2 billion gamers. What we're about to see when crypto gaming actually happens is going to be larger than anything we've seen in crypto so far. It is going to have a larger market cap than the entire market cap of all of crypto right now, which is like $1.7 trillion. It is going to be absolutely huge. And if you are not on the inside of this, if you are sitting on the sidelines, you are going to be the saddest panda and you're going to be a person buying the equivalent to a $20,000, $30,000 Bitcoin instead of a $100 Bitcoin, which crypto gaming is in right now. I'm not going to hype this up anymore. If you want to see my explanation why crypto gaming is going to be so huge, simply check the video that's in the link in the description. I'm not going to make any jokes in this video because this needs to get out because the most dangerous thing about crypto gaming right now isn't the fact that you could miss out on giant gains. It's the fact that 90% of it right now is mostly nonsense. It's in such a baby phase right now that anybody can replicate and make something in that you can lose your butt gargantuanly if you invest in the wrong games. However, if you invest in the right games, for example, I got on day one of Alluvian. I've made 100x gains on that, millions in returns off of a very small investment. And if you understand how to find games like that, that type of investment is going to make it look tiny. For example, if you got an Axie Infinity day one, you're at 500,000x gains at this point. And the thing is, Axie Infinity, games like Alluvium, these are just the first phase. Okay, looking at these games and thinking this is like the peak of crypto gaming, that's like looking at Super Mario when it was on the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and saying this is the peak of gaming, this is what we're going to be looking at. That's like looking at the first Snake game on a mobile phone and saying, well, this is the peak of mobile gaming. It's not. It is the first little tip of the iceberg before this castle that's the size of Mount Everest arises from the ocean. In this video, I want to show you how I invest in this and what I look for to just give you the same advantage I have and help you from losing your butt. If you wanna see the games I'm investing in really early and what I'm getting involved in from talking to studios, founders, basically nonstop, just follow me on Twitter at ZSS Becker. But let me just get into this. Now look, there's no way I could just condense everything I do when it comes to investing in games down to just buy this coin or look at this thing. In fact, I want you to be able to find your own coins and do your own investigation. Okay, but I wanna give you basically four layers here. I wanna give you a research layer, how to spot BS, how to spot the most important part, which is going to be marketing if the games actually get bought and played, and then identify games that are actually going to make you money. Okay, because what you need to understand about when it comes to investing in games is they look like this when you're investing them. This is Alluvium right here. And most games, for example, when I invest in Alluvium, no one really wanted to buy Alluvium. Nobody wanted to touch it. And if you look at most games, they don't do anything until they get adopted. And so it's all about finding games that are going to get to this point right here. It's not particularly hard to find these either. They aren't that challenging to spot. It's the fact that people don't really want to look at this and they don't understand game marketing and it's so damn early at this point in time. So in order to do this, you're going to have to know what to look for in games. You're going to have to know how to research them and you're not going to get tipped off by huge pumps and influencers talking about them, especially if you want to make a lot of money here. You're going to have to be able to find things on your own and you're going to have to be able to look at trends that already happen in gaming to tell you what things in crypto gaming are probably going to take off because newsflash, people are going to play games in crypto gaming the same exact way they play games in real life. Okay, so how should you go about researching crypto games first off? So the first thing I would do when you're going and researching games is I would join every potential discord you can with gaming focused communities. You probably can't afford it, but if you can get into it, I would join the cyber Kongs community. And on top of that, if you have a chance as you're watching this video to get in Neo Tokyo, that's basically myself and Elio trades NFT gaming alpha community. I would get into that because that's all me and him actually do all day. And the community we're building there is going to be the best gaming alpha community period. 
That's the whole intent of the entire NFT project. I would get into that. But a good place to actually get started is you could actually go and look at the people I'm following on Twitter, okay? You wanna follow the big brands, the big investors, the big VCs. You wanna start following the thought leaders. For example, Coco Bear, I guess I would consider myself. Look at people, Yatsu, the founder of uh, Animoca Brands. And all the big VCs and investors in crypto gaming, there aren't a lot of them, but when you start following these people, you're gonna notice that they're all pretty much interconnected. And over time, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start building up your own crypto Twitter of crypto gaming. If you go and follow my Twitter, it's mostly NFT experts and crypto gaming experts. I don't really participate in DeFi. I don't participate in the rest of crypto. I participate 95% in crypto gaming. So build yourself a really good Twitter feed. Then, when you're inside the Twitter feed, what you wanna do is you wanna find as many discords and communities you can get into for these. I gave you two really good ones, which are again, NFT communities. And I'm gonna be straight with you right here. You're just going to have to fumble around. If you're not in those communities, following people on Twitter and looking for good discords and finding discord groups of people that you like is the best way to go about it. You're gonna find all the information on crypto gaming in those two places. Then what I would also suggest is find people like you who are fanatics about crypto gaming and create a good group of people that exchange ideas. Don't go and get in discords or telegram groups with tons of random people. Find maybe 10 of friends or people through crypto communities that you really think are smart and impress you and maybe are on your own level and just keep an eye out for each other and share projects with each other. That's the three best ways to do this. It's so early that there really isn't anything else. You're not going to find huge NFT groups like are already existing. You're going to have to dig around a little bit for these. On top of that, when it comes to crypto gaming, try to participate in as many spaces, chats, any talks with people you're looking at, anything you see on Elio Trade's channel, uh, my channel. Try to participate and follow along with those as much as you possibly can. And that's what you're going to do is you're going to stumble upon those people, those spaces, those discords. That's the best advice I can give you right now. Now, the next advice I can give you is that you need to look out for scams. Now, what are scams? I'm not necessarily calling games that do these scams, but you need to look and understand that most games, most games, if you go on Steam, do not make any money. So the vast majority of crypto games will never make any money or get any adoption. The vast majority of games on Steam and normal real life world, in the mainstream world, do not even get played by more than 10,000 people, 5,000 people. So it's very important you understand. And then most importantly, games that are just ripoffs or thrown together crap do not get played. So you have to get really good at identifying thrown together crap. I'm gonna give you a very good example right here. You need to understand that when you're looking at games, a lot of people are gonna look at gameplay. I'm going to give you the type of gameplay to look at here in a second. But what you also understand is that most games and most gameplay can be thrown together. So you need to be super skeptical of gameplay and gameplay promises. You don't actually quite understand how difficult it is to actually put together a working title that has a good gameplay loop that people want to play. Just because something looks nice and looks like it plays nice doesn't matter. If you want proof of that, go watch my gaming video where I break down gaming scams below here, which I go into a lot more detail in. Uh, and that's going to break down in a lot more detail. But what you need to be able to look out for is, for example, this is this is a demo pack. I can put together a game that looks like this using this pack probably in about three to four days. Okay, and this is with my game coding experience. Okay, I'm, and I'm not a good game developer. I can code games, but I'm not a, a world class game developer by any means. You need to be not impressed by gameplay footage. And when you look at games, one of the first things I always do is I developed a lot of games. I developed a game using a lot of Unity Asset Store FX. So for example, I can go look up Fireball right here, and these can be fired that I use in my game, so I don't have to hire an artist to go and make these. Using stuff like this is fine. What you need to understand is that people, most of the time, and I've seen probably four or five proposals for me to invest in games like this today, uh, they use uh, particularly the Polygon packs on the Unity Asset Store. And then when they use these Polygon packs right here, they say, look at me, I've made a game. And they go and put these, these models around in the game, put the models around, and voila, you have a game that looks like it works. You need to be brutally aware of this. And you also need to understand when you're looking at games, everybody promises gameplay, a loop, something like that. Do not invest in things or expect them to work out before you actually see gameplay and whatnot. For example, most Patreon games have gameplay, they have developers lined up, they have the code, and they're making their own art, everything lined up ahead of time. The number one thing I can also suggest to you is do a massive amount of research on indie game marketing and indie game development. The more you do and the more research you put into that, the more able you're going to be able to pick out scams. I can't give you one indicating sign. And frankly, if you can't 
go and take the time to actually do the research in the niche you really want to get into, you're not going to do well either. But the number one way to prevent yourself from being scammed is look at indie games and how they're developed and the scope and how the teams look. You're going to see the behaviors of teams that are actually developing games and the behavior of con men and people that are putting together a good pitch to get you to invest in a coin. I'm going to be really straight up with you. There's really no reason for a project to have a coin or be selling NFTs before there's even gameplay or a beta even available. Now, I've invested in projects that do do that, but you need to be on the lookout for projects going and launching all this stuff without ever having a scrap of gameplay, a loop, or anything established. You also need to look at the teams. Teams that have really good projects and, and, and things going for them are going to have teams that developed prior mobile games and experiences. This, this isn't independent. It isn't like crypto gaming just happened and we have a new wave of developers. You need to understand that gaming crypto and play to earn and, and crypto functionality is a function or feature of the game. It isn't the game itself. So we're gonna see the same exact developers who's built good games in the past making good crypto games. A lot of nonsense and crap is passing for passable games. The next thing I wanna look at when it comes to games is you if you go and actually look and research games that have worked in the past, and if you research indie gaming, you're going to understand that 95% of a game's success early on is the art. It's going to be the art. And that's what I mean, and what I mean by the art is actual screenshots of gameplay, okay? So a lot of times when we talk about crypto nonsense, you're gonna see a lot of drawn pictures. Okay, you're gonna see a lot of art of the game, a lot of pictures of the NFTs and the models no, but you're not actually going to see any gameplay or, or custom work being done. So one project I'm really involved in is Big Time. They're making a game right now. And the reason why I got into this game is because I went and talked to their team. I spoke with everyone there. I've watched the gameplay videos. Everything about it is absolutely phenomenal. And when I go and look at the team that's involved in this, this is a team of people that have gone and built tons of AAA games. What I'm looking for is a combination of people that have worked in big titles and also worked in crypto. So for example, Ari on this project, he's the founder of Decentraland, and we have people that are in tons of these large projects right here, and have worked in World of Warcraft, God of War, Fortnite, etc. These are the teams I'm going to invest in because they're gonna get out the first project. If you have some mystery team of people who have never worked together on projects before, you're not looking at something great there. Right there. But what I wanna look for, because you're not always gonna see gameplay, and what I'm gonna look for is very unique art that pops because the thing that drives game sales very early on is going to be art. What I look for when it comes to games is I wanna find games that look a lot like Hades. Have something that creates interest and, and gets you going, oh wow, that's beautiful. Because the thing that determines sales on Steam initially is going to be game art. If you research indie games, most sales are usually determined by the game art. So for example, if you go look at a game like The First Tree, this sold an ungodly amount of copies made the solo developer a ton of money. And so, yes, you can make great games with just a couple developers. And he was able to go and make a ton of money with this game, <clears throat> primarily through releasing GIFs and images on Twitter and Instagram. It was the pictures of the game and the art that made it work. And so what I'm also gonna look for in teams, and I'm just giving you a lot of spitballing things right here, is when you're looking at great games, for example, Hades, it was an early release game. You might've even played this game. When they were releasing this game, they were going in early release and they were sharing the game as they made it and allowing people to play it, test it out, etc. When And this is without raising tons of money, without asking for tons of investors to hold the coin or buy their NFTs. And so when I'm looking at games, what I'm looking for is sure, I don't mind if they're selling NFTs. For example, Big Time has sold some NFTs and whatnot, but they already raised money exclusively for the game and they're making the game independent of the crypto community. That's one of the biggest things I want to look for. I don't want to find a game that's trying to hide their gameplay and hide everything they're going to do and just releasing some pictures on some cheap NFTs and then saying, oh, it's coming, the gameplay's coming. What you need to understand about games is it's going to take probably about a year to two years to even get out a decent game, okay? So when I'm looking at the stuff surrounding the game, I'm going to massively look at the artwork. I'm gonna look at similar projects that the team has worked on. And I'm gonna look for people that have experience building games. For example, you, you don't have to build Fortnite to be a great game developer. If you look at games like Hollow Knight, that's gonna stick out to me even more. Hollow Knight is, a, is an indie game that was built by very few people, or you look at Shovel Knight, or you look at Stardew Valley. Those are really good examples of games I'm also gonna look for. And it comes down to the next thing I'm going to look for. When I look at games like those, what I want to try and find is one really intriguing art. I, I can't stress it enough. That's going to determine people's interest in the game. I've seen games on crypto Twitter that just have like cool drawings that have, that have 
huge market caps. They have no development or anything done whatsoever. And again, I'm going to be looking for those constant gameplay updates. If, look, if people are asking for investors, they better be updating like crazy. Okay, they better be updating like crazy. And what I want to look for a lot of times is I want to find these games super early on. Okay, so I found big time super early on. A lot of games I'm investing in and I'm going to be talking about a whole lot, I found super early on before they're even thinking about doing an IDO or offering coins or whatnot. But the next thing I'm going to look at the game when it comes to marketing and what the game actually does is I'm going to look at the gameplay loop. Okay, so what's the gameplay loop that keeps people coming back to it and playing? I'm going to tell you straight up in most of crypto Twitter and crypto games, people are like, hey, the game has play to earn functionality and it's a metaverse. That's what people are using as marketing. Everyone's going to lose all their money. What you want to look for is a very defined gameplay loop on what's going to get people hooked and addicted. If you look at Hades, what's the gameplay loop? Okay, you try to escape, you play the game. And what are the things in what you need to understand the gameplay loop is, is what's going to trigger dopamine and get people hooked. So Hades, you start at your house. You try to escape and you collect items and kill creatures. All right. So you kill creatures that allow you to collect items that allow you to get more power. Okay. As you get more power, you're able to collect money and whatnot. It allows you to also gain more power next time you come back. Then what happens is you go and if your character isn't strong enough, you die and you reset. Okay, and then you get to do it again and you gain more power, more power, more power. And this is basically Hades in a nutshell. This is this is literally all the game is. Collect objects and things that give you dopamine, power you up, make your character more powerful, and gain long-term uh, attributes and bonuses. And if your character isn't powerful enough, die and go home. If your character is powerful enough, you get to keep a bunch of items and you get to make yourself stronger so that you can go back and do it again on a harder level. This is, do you see this loop right here? This is super addictive. This is far more important and to throw this in there, what I'm going to look for in the crypto functionality of the game is I want to find that really complete loop. And I want to find a way where that crypto functionality is placed in the game in a creative or smart way that is going to drive an underlying economy or get the player to want to be buying the NFTs, using the NFTs or using the crypto tokens in a way. Okay, so there's no one way this is going to happen. But for example, if you look at gold in World of Warcraft, how was that used? How was that, that put into the game in a really smart way that made it very important to the gameplay? If we look at games like The Sims, how could certain pieces of furniture in the game that would be the equivalent to maybe NFTs in a gaming crypto, how are those placed in the game in an interesting way that ties into the feedback loop? If the NFT or crypto functionality is tied into the dopamine feedback loop that's going through the game that hooks people, people are going to consistently work with inside this. What most games are trying to do, and even some games that are big right now, is they're making like a, a labor camp of a game where you just do this mindless, really boring game uh, to earn coins to play the game. What you want the incentive to be what you want hooked into the game is going to be something that's tied to the loop that hooks people to the game and it gets people coming back and interacting with the in-game economy. And so it's a feature with it and the game itself will drive the economy. This will drive the price of the tokens, drive the price of NFTs instead of people just coming on to do manual labor. Because what's going to happen is the games with the best loops and the best gameplay are going to be the games that people choose to play the earn on because it's not a game where they're having to do labor to play these games. It's a game where the game itself drives the demand for the tokens, the NFTs, and everything going on inside the game, such as land sales. Most games we're looking at right now have no loops, no addictive schemes, nothing except to play their earn functionality. And I'm sorry, they're not really going to make it because we're going to see the same type of behaviors we already see in gaming just simply move over the gaming crypto. And the in-game economies are not going to be driven by games that don't have a fun gameplay loop. And the, again, the loop needs to be in a way that crypto is added into the loop, not the core of the loop. Then any effing play to earn metaverse promises. If a game doesn't have this laid out in extreme detail, probably not going to make it. Because this is literally all a game is. There's so many games like Stardew Valley made by one developer or Shovel Knight or Hollow Knight. A lot of knights going on here that have very simple gameplay loops that are well explained. And this is why the games worked. The final thing I'm going to look for in marketing is I'm going to look at indie games that have worked in the past. Okay, and why do I look at indie games exclusively? Because most crypto gaming studios are not going to have a triple A game out. It's not going to work. Triple A crypto games will be the same triple A companies that work now. To make a triple A game, you don't understand the amount of work and people have to go into that. So what I'm going to look for is games that have been super successful in the indie market. And why do I do that? It's because they've been 
successful with teams of one to 30 people. Okay, so if you look at Hades, I don't think it had a giant team. If you look at Hollow Knight, didn't have a giant team. If you look at Dusk, a really f successful shooter. If you look at most indie games, they don't have giant teams. And so I want to look at teams like that because that's going to give me an indicator of one, what worked and what can get developed and then what type of games are going to work. And so when I look at games, what I'm going to look for is, for example, I invested in a game called Minds of Delarnia recently because it really reminds me of Spelunky, which is a very, very successful roguelike in the indie space. And so Owen Fine games have been super successful. There's a lot of games like Stardew Valley, which work as great blueprints for actual achievable metaverses. If you look at Treeverse, very similar idea right here. And then finally, what I'm going to look for in games, and this is just a bunch of stuff all thrown together, is I'm going to look at the scope of the game. So what is the scope? Okay, the scope is what has to get done for the game to work. So if you look at, for example, a game like Hades, I absolutely love this as an investing example because Hades has a very defined scope. There's four levels, there's 30 to something enemies, there's this many abilities, and then there's a final boss. Now, of course, there's way more to the game than Hades, but it's a very controlled bubble, all right? There's, there's, very, there's a very set amount of goals that are achievable right here. Then we look at a game like Cyberpunk, okay? Cyberpunk, what's the scope of that game? Uh, everything that's ever existed that's ever been in a video game. We got driving, we got skins, we got uh, items, we got RPG elements, we got first-person shooter mechanics. The more complicated a game gets, the more complicated a game gets. And so I much prefer a game that looks like those indie games I mentioned because those are going to get done and they're going to be done well. If you look at Axie Affinity, for example, it's a very simple game with a simple gameplay loop and it's an achievable scope. That means that they can actually get done in the next one to two years. Look, if you invest in something like a Mass Effect right now, or it says they're going to be like a Skyrim or a World of Warcraft, do you know how long it took to develop those games? Skyrim came back, came out like almost a decade ago. Uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. That's what a lot of people like compare their games to and whatnot. They haven't even made the next one yet. They're still working on it. It took like Grand Theft Auto five years to get made. We're not seeing these games, these, these crypto games releasing anytime soon. What we're probably going to see is current games adding NFT functionality. We're not going to see AAA games releasing like that. What we're going to see is mobile games and indie style games really getting a lot of adoption and the people moving to those. Games that are achievable like a Pokemon style game. We're going to see games like those. What is, look at Pokemon. It has a very achievable scope. You need pictures, you need a battle system. And so what I prefer is games that have a good addictive gameplay loop and a limited scope. That's what I'm gonna look for. So for example, one of the reasons why I invested in D-Race is because that game has a very good established gameplay loop for gambling. It has a limited scope and it's achievable and it can get done. The reason why I invested in Snook, for example, which is a snake game, it has a very, very limited scope. And so all they have to do in that game, it's just a little snake game where they they where people go and eat bubbles and then they fight each other. And that's really all there is to the game. So all they have to do to make this game work is just focus on this gameplay loop. And so when games are made, I want to see a game get to working on the gameplay loop and player feedback as fast as possible. If it can't get the player feedback very quickly, I'm probably not going to invest in it. I want to see a game that can, players can start using and start getting addicted to and start giving the team feedback very quickly. Or if I'm looking for something big, I'm going to look for established teams that have done it before. If the team hasn't done it before, they're not going to do it right now. Period. And so this video is going on about 30 minutes and I don't want to go on forever. And I wanted to give you guys a pretty good starting point for investing in crypto gaming. This is everything I look at. And of course, I'm going to use my own personal experience. Uh, and I've been investing in crypto gaming for almost a year now uh, to go and weed out the bad ones from the good ones and whatnot and decide what I'm going to invest in. But this is going to give you a really good starting point. If you're looking at these things I just mentioned, you have a considerable advantage over the rest of the gaming crypto market because, I mean, people are literally investing in Unity asset store demos. It's nonsense. Okay, so if you can spot this stuff and you actually understand gaming marketing, gaming development, you're going to have such a huge edge and actually being like, it's it's not even fair. It's literally not even fair. So I wanted to get this video out. If you guys have any questions below, I'm not going to answer them. Follow me on Twitter because I call out a lot of games I'm looking at and do a lot of the research for you there. And that's all I got.